Yeah, that's what we want to do. Looks like my idiot brain has us recording. So, Elliot Hulse, bro, how you doing? All is well, JP. Thanks for having me, dude. Yeah, yeah, you're welcome. Hey, man, um, there, there's a meme that always comes to mind when, when I think about you. Uh, set the context for the meme before I share what it is. But, you know, seeing your evolution from, I guess, when I started knowing of you, I don't know, probably eight years ago, maybe 10 years ago, and then in that time, get to know you a little bit, and then seeing you now, everybody always says like, yeah, Elliot Hulse has changed. <laughs> and, uh, some of that time, some of those people aren't saying it in a positive light. So to that, the meme always comes to my mind where there's the caterpillar and the butterfly sitting at a dinner table. Caterpillar looks at the butterfly and says, you've changed. The butterfly says, you're supposed to. <laughs> Dude, it's so awesome seeing you change and apologizing to fucking nobody for mm -hmm. how you're changing and who you're becoming. Yeah, well, can't help it. I'm, I'm an unstable man. I can't <laughs> stay one way. I might be like schizoid or something like that. So, uh, so, so I just kind of go with the flow and wherever I end up, where I'm at. Yeah. I, I think that's awesome. And I think it takes courage to go into the, un the unstable realm of changing, letting go of who a person is, what was true for them in order to become a truer version of themselves. I, I think most people would w look at the idea of saying like, oh yeah, you know, whatever you thought when you were in third grade, whatever your intellectual, le intellectual level was, emotional values, like stay there, don't change. We know like <laughs> that'd be crazy. Yet so many have that unconscious bias, like, you know, okay, once you're what, 18 or something, now you should just never change. And it's actually looked at as a bad thing if you do change. So be stable, cryogenically freeze yourself in the coffin of your comfort zone. And, but nonetheless, you shatter that. And, and it's exciting. It really is. It's, an, it's been inspiring, yeah. brother. Stability is boring too, right? Like there's so much to life. There's so many amazing things to try out and be and do and have. So I don't know, I'm like a kid in a candy store sometimes here with life. Where it's like, okay, this was great. I had this. And maybe it's my ADD too. And then I'm like, what that over there looks awesome. Why don't I try that out? And I just give myself permission to do that. Yeah. That's awesome. And and um yeah, man, I'm I'm curious. You're you're in St. Petersburg, Florida. Is that right? Mm-hmm. That's where Strength Camp is. Uh-huh. Yeah. But we moved about four years ago. So we're in Clearwater, which is only 20 Clearwater. minutes north. Cool. What I'm curious, yeah. just the the read of the the pulse of the lockdown where you're at in Florida. I'm curious what the lockdown light is like, and two, what the obedience is like to whatever the lockdown mandates are. Do you know the uh, Florida man meme? I do. <laughs> it's so true. Yeah. Our governor is a Florida man, and we're all Florida men, which basically means we do what we want. And so Florida has turned out to be like the freest state to be in right now. From what I understand, we're even better than Texas. And Texas is the uh, free state. Yep, I'm in Texas and I've been getting jealous of Florida. <laughs> you know, I've, I've done comedy shows in Florida. Uh, I got to see your wife. I think you were speaking somewhere, so I didn't get to see you. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it was, Texas is, people are pretty free thinking. It's awesome, but Florida was, next level uh non-obedience to something that doesn't serve them so <laughs> yeah yeah we're bro. doing it we're leading the way uh governor desantis he's our new governor he's like uh we're never going to lock down ever again yeah that's his commitment and we got i think we got at least another five years of him or so so uh it's just not going to work here now i don't know if biden actually becomes president Mm -hmm. I don't know if he's going to do like a national thing and I don't know how that would work, but um, we'll, we'll be good. We'll be all right. As long as uh, our governor stands his ground. Yeah. You know, on that, 
the with what's going on in the world, uh, you you've had some insight that's opened my eyes to more insight, and we can get into that. Yet, I I, I think like with what's going on in the world, there's like three levels of awareness and action that I think of there's like first off just awareness of what's actually going on in the world beneath the mind control of the mainstream media and number two there's like what is what are men and women doing to prepare themselves and protect and preserve their family physically and freedoms and then you know, the, the third element is what's a person doing to contribute to the greater good of helping awaken other people. So on that note of like, cool, you're in Florida, you've, I think the best place to be right now, your governor is a freedom oriented individual. Then we have the wild card of if Biden does take office and whoever runs Biden starts running the country, if there's national lockdowns, what if that were to happen what are you doing at the personal level to protect and preserve your freedoms and your family oh well one of my favorite words is no (laughs) and so (laughs) i say no like i don't wear a mask i haven't worn a mask I go into the store and everybody wears a mask and I'm the guy smiling. And my wife is long. The great thing too, is I got a a wife who's down for the cause. So she and I are like the, you know, the, the no couple, the, the, the rebel, the rebel couple walking through the store, Publix or Target, Walmart. I took my whole kid. I took all my kids into Walmart. Now my kids, because they're kids, they, they will wear a mask, right? Like mom and dad, We'll go wherever we want without, but like my kids, I guess, because children still want to like, I guess the peer pressure still gets to them. Uh, They want to be liked and they want to do what everybody else does. And I think in a way, there's a lot of people that, kids included, I think, that actually think the masks are cool. Yeah. Like you get to be incognito. It's like nobody gets, and I think, I I know for my daughters, at least one of them, it's like, I get to hide now. It's like, I just love having this thing on. So they usually wear it. We went to Walmart because we were out camping. We wanted to get some uh, fishing, fishing reels. And uh, I had me and my four kids in line, like ducks behind me. We marched right in there with no masks and everybody had masks on. And my kids were like astonished. They're like, wow, dad, no one's saying anything to us. They all have masks, they're all looking at us. And I'm like, that's right, kids. You're a hulse. <laughs> we just do what we want. <laughs> so defiance. I think defiance is so damn important, especially now. We've been growing, we've grown up with this, you know, they like to say, don't be bullied, right? Like when you're a kid, don't, don't go with the peer pressure. Don't be peer pressured. But it's like all the adults allow themselves to be bullied and peer pressured. So, you know, of course there, there, there are many things, but the first is defiance. Amen to that. Yeah. It, uh, I think it was David Icke on an interview, uh, whether someone loves them or hates them, uh, doesn't matter, but he said something brilliant, which is you are not controllable unless you're in a state of fear. Right. And, and I think when, you know, recognizing a state of fear a person's in is obviously the first step to regaining freedoms that are trying to be taken away and, I think a Ram Dass quote that always comes to mind with this kind of thing is you can't get out of a jail. You don't know you're in. Mm-hmm. You can't let go of fears. You don't even know you carry. And I would guess most people walking around being obedient, uh, they're not even aware of the level of fear they carry. It's kind of like so pervasive. Does a fish know it's swimming in water? Does a person know it's swimming in fear? Yeah. I think a part of the fear is not even of the virus itself. I mean, because let's be honest, just look at the science. It's not killing us. It's not what they said it would be. The fear, once again, is the peer pressure. They're afraid someone else is going to say something. They're afraid no one's going to like them. 
They're afraid of being ostracized or being the bad boy. So it's not even like, okay, the virus is one thing. All right, so maybe you're afraid of that. You don't want to die. That's kind of like a basic fear of death. But it's like, you're actually just scared that someone's going to point at you and, and scold you. And you're an adult and yeah. <laughs> grow up. Yeah, the world will end if someone shames me. I, I think the, the immature psyche uh, uh, becomes a slave to that. Like, cool, let me people please at all costs, even at the expense of myself, in order to uh, avoid that intense discomfort that comes when someone projects their delusional opinion onto me. Mm -hmm. And then I, I can recognize that because I, I s still feel it in me. I do my best to not be obedient to that avoidance of discomfort. But man, it's real. It is. What um, you, you had a freaking awesome quote in this. You sent it to me. It's a talk you did in Florida. It's uh, your talk. I believe it was called Making Men Strong Again. Mm-hmm done at the, I think, 21, uh, 21 convention or uh, conference. Mm -hmm. Amazing talk. I linked to that in the show notes. I'm on my second time watching it. There was just a level of potency within that hour 15, you conveying what's going on in this world. It was just so potent and dense. And uh, in various resources I've looked at, it's kind of like, yeah, that all, it checks out from my perspective, but it was just like, boom, in an hour 15. But the quote I wanted to mention and get your, well, like, why'd you say this? When you're being politically correct, you're putting a gun to your head. Yeah. What do you mean by that? Oh, wow. So... <laughs> Where can I begin with that one? Political correctness, social Marxism. We're, political correctness comes from an ideology that has at its root the destruction of our culture. And that's cultural Marxism. Right. Yeah. And it's the stated, the stated objective of the founders of cultural Marxism, uh, Antonio Gramsci and Mark Lucas, to destroy the West, to destroy it from, let it implode from inside out. These are, you know, what some refer to as the errors of Russia, because, you know, the Bolshevik revolution happened in the East, it happened out there. Um, but they couldn't defeat us with bombs and bullets. So they had to sneak into our brains, into our souls and destroy us from inside. And so what did they do? Gramsci calls it the long march to the institutions. They got into the media, they got into the government, they got into the churches, they got into the schools, they got into every piece of the establishment that programs our software. Um, it's everywhere. So when we abide by that, we're basically saying, yes, destroy me. It's okay, I'm going to go along with this weapon, you know, uh, I talked about Yuri Bezmenov and he calls it ideological subversion. So it's like, by being politically correct, I'm saying, yes, I'm okay with ideological subversion and, uh, the, and the agenda of the subversion, which is to destroy me. And, you know, to destroy a culture, there are two things, and Gramsci speaks about this also, two things in particular, but they really are one thing, which is destroy the father. So it's about men. You've got to destroy the father above. You've got to de-Christianize. You have to get rid of God. Because if there's God, then the government can't be God. And that's the ultimate objective of communism. And the fastest way to really demoralize the people is get fathers out of the home. And so you've got to kill God and kill men, <laughs> right? Like literally like, make us weak again. Make us weak. So that's my whole thing is like make men strong again because we're being weak. Yeah. And when, you know, with one of the ways we're weak, um, when, when we're biting our lip and not saying the thing we have to say, not saying our truth and, and not speaking to reality as it is, 
we're being weak when we're trying to be politically correct, people pleasing. We don't realize we're the, you know, we're acquiescing to this cultural Marxism to usher in communism, destroy America as we know it. We don't know we're doing it, but we're doing it. And we castrate ourselves when we, we hide our opinion and like, oh yeah, there's, yeah, there isn't a biological difference between men and women. <laughs> Why the fuck can't I breastfeed my child then? <laughs> is there something wrong with my mammary glands? So is that, you know, I'm barfing my opinion, but when people acquiesce and be politically correct, is that one of the acts of weakness that you're talking about? Yeah, man, of course. Uh, I'm reading this really interesting book right now called uh, Live Not By Lies. And he talks about totalitarianism, right? As it, wa as it was un unfolded in the East, you know, after the Bolsh Bolshevik Revolution and all the, you know, the, the communist takeover of Eastern Russia and like, or, or Eastern Europe. And basically like how there was a hard totalitarianism, he called it. Hard totalitarianism is literally by the, by the end of a gun. Like you don't say those things or you'll be shot. Yeah. Oh, you're a political dissident you will be shot. You'll end up in a gulag. You'll, so you don't say these things because your neighbor will rat you out and your family will be killed. That doesn't, what we have here in the West, what we're experiencing is a soft totalitarianism. This is what he describes it as. He says a soft totalitarianism is not governed by bullets and bombs and people pointing guns at you. It's done to yourself. It's soft because it's like, it's, it's, it's hidden, it's, it's uh, insidious. So by biting your tongue, like you're saying, or, um, or uh, just acquiescing was the word you use, you're basically imposing soft totalitarianism on yourself and others. So that the lords of this world who did what they wanted to do in Eastern Europe and 60 million people died as a result are doing it here except it's, it's a lot less obvious. They did it there with violence, but what they're doing here is less, it's not about violence, it's about manipulating people with pleasure, the pleasure of being liked, but also the pleasure of, you know, sexual uh, promiscuity, uh, not getting uncomfortable because you might not be liked, you know, things of that nature. So it's like real insidious, soft totalitarianism. That's what we're seeing. Yeah, man. It, you know, when, when I started to dive into the, the communist subversion, what's happening in the U.S. and has been happening for decades long, you know, the, the long march, not done through violence, but done through this slow indoctrination through our schools, our education system, Hollywood, um, you know, mm. the, the manipulating culture. Before I got it, like really started studying it, my mind, like when I hear people talk about like, I'm, you know, we got to worry about communism. It's like, fuck you. Like, no, this is America. You don't have to worry about communism. And, and like, sometimes I would even make jokes like, oh, you're being a communist. And then I noticed like when, when this lockdown shit started, I, I started seeing things. I was like, well, this looks like communism. So I'd start to have commentary about it in my videos, just like, well, this looks like communism. So I'm going to call it that but I don't even really think it's part of the, you know, communist infiltration. And then man, the past handful of months, it's just, it's, it's very obvious. You know, all these things that have been in place for decades, the cultural Marxism, the critical theory, the demoralization, which is the first stage of bringing in communism. Holy hell, that's all, happening and the demoralization like i think it was just yesterday nancy pelosi the speaker of the house you know announced new rules in the house of representatives you cannot say the words mother father son or daughter 
And I had someone open with a prayer and ended the prayer with a man and a woman, which is also fucking backwards because you just said you can't use gendered fucking terms. But Jesus Christ, man. So anyway, as I'm half using this as a therapy session because I have anger about it, (laughs) you know, what do you, I, I'm curious, what do you say, if you even want to say anything, to the people who like ob, kind of have this mental objection, denial of like, dude, no, communism in the U.S., bro? Like, what are you on crack? Curious hmm. what you say to them. I can't say anything to them. Because as uh, Besmanov speaks about with ideological subversion and demoralization, you could... He said in, the, in, the, in the, the very popular video where he talks about this, that until they're in a concentration camp with a Soviet boot crushing their balls, they will not believe what you're telling them. He says the demoralization is complete when you show a person facts. He's like, you can show them the clearest, most obvious, plain as day facts about the situation, and they cannot hear it. They cannot receive it. That is the perfection of the demoralization. You can show people the truth about, you know, how many things are we, uh, the lies that we're living by today. You can show them the science. You know, we were, talk, we were talking about the, the, the uh, pandemic before, and we got these vaccines now. You can show them the science. You can show them the CDC website. You can show them the Moderna website about how this vaccine is basically gonna turn us into computer, like, what is it transhumanism yeah on the website they talk about how this is like going to implant a software in us that that has to be updated with they literally use this kind of language on the moderna website and if you talk to people and try to explain to them it sounds nuts what i'm saying but you just go if you show them the websites they'll look at it and they'll still be like you're wrong you show them the facts they'll still say they're wrong so i have nothing to say (laughs) <laughs> to people who are not willing to wake up. They're, they're supposed to sleep. They're doing what they're supposed to do. And guess what? If they want to take the vaccine, they'll be the first ones to ex- be extinct. And so it'll be good. It'll be great because we'll be left with the strong people, the rebels, those who say no. So please, take the vaccine. We need to get rid of y'all. <laughs> get out of here. If anybody wants my dose of a fucking vaccine, you can have it. <laughs> yeah, do your part to save humanity and take, take your, uh, um, it's like, va- it's a vaccine assisted suicide. Like, yeah, just go ahead. Yeah. And you know, the, how you mentioned, you could show people, you know, here's the truth and they literally won't see it when there's been enough years and inundation of the the subversion, the brainwashing happening. (laughs) And, and you look at all the things with the virus. I mean, you mentioned the vaccine, you look at the people having their businesses destroyed, huge parts of our society literally being led into poverty. You show them that and they're like, no, 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 we're being protected by a virus. We're not being led into poverty. Like, you know, they're going <laughs> to give us a $600 check like every six months. Like that's not poverty, but they don't see it. it and I think it is, it's kind of, you know, they don't see it until they're ready. You know, I wasn't ready to see it for, you know, for a little while. Um, I think so. I forgot who it was, but someone had a great thought. They said, you know, doing the work to help people now the goal isn't to wake up the sheep the goal is to wake up the lions yeah what i'm curious what other are there other specific examples of the blaring obvious truths that are just being denied oh so do you remember earlier this year when we had all the race riots Indeed. Yeah, I, I became a fan of Candace Owens back then. I, I started watching her videos skills. and this and she totally destroyed this narrative of police brutality. And she showed the statistics. 
and she led you to the websites of the Department of Justice and said, look at the statistics. And it shows that police aren't killing black people at any, any, any greater degree than they're killing white people. In fact, more white people are dying at the hands of police than the blacks. And then she points out all the reasons why the whole BLM movement is BS. And that's, hard, that's a hard pill to swallow. First of all, you know, it's so tricky, that name, Black Lives Matters, because it's if you very you're very against it, God it's like, it. I'm not saying Black lives don't matter. <laughs> don't get me wrong. I'm half Black. So what am I saying? The half of me doesn't matter? Yeah. I'm saying it's a demonic organization. And as I showed in my talk, it's radical feminism at its finest, because these women do not care two licks about Black men. They care about power. Yeah. So that's another one. Like, the, the 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 pitting against the races in America is, is 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 built upon lies. Yeah, yeah. You um, in in your talk I watched, which again linked to in the show notes, making men strong again. You had mentioned how the Black Lives Matter organization, not the statement of a sensible human heart, <laughs> but the organization is run by feminists. And I also believe you, you not only said in your talk that uh, feminism is simply car- cultural Marxism. It's just what it is. It's called something different, but it's the same thing. But then you showed how feminism is in fact cultural Marxism. So if you have this organization that makes a manipulative ploy on the human heart, like Black Lives Matter, and if you don't support us, then you're saying black lives don't matter. But then what they're doing is actually being run by feminists to destroy what we love about our society. Uh, I believe they mentioned their uh, mission statement is to destroy the nucleus of the family. Yeah. And that's pretty disturbing. Yeah. Yeah. You, uh, you've talked a lot about in, in the, uh, video I watched a lot about the the integrity of the family being so important, and I would dare also say a relationship with God, the Father, being so important. I'm curious, would you mind riffing a little bit on why the family structure is so important because it's being attacked now, and why the relationship with your higher power is so darn important? Well, you know, I can go into all kinds of philosophical reasons. I have wide ideas, but once again, facts, right? Like nobody could dispute facts. It's not like Elliot's opinion, it's what is. And when we look at the facts, when families are destroyed, a society falls apart. 90% of the men in prisons are from single parent homes. They're raised by the mothers. When there's no father in the home, obesity rate goes up, alcoholism goes up, drug abuse goes up, suicide goes up, incarceration goes up. All the bad things in this world are exacerbated. If I said that properly, exacerbated uh, by having no fathers in the home. So, I mean, like if the stated goal of cultural Marxism was to destroy the father, you see that its ultimate end is our current day, which is our our culture is destroyed as a result of easy divorce, abortion, contraception, radical feminism. They've totally, there's a great book and I'm kind of just ranting in circles, but there's a great book by E. Michael Jones called Libido Dominandi, Libido Dominandi. And it's basically about sexual Uh, domination through what we call liberation. So the whole sexual revolution was nothing about, was not about freeing us, it was about enslaving us to our sexual desires, which ultimately make us weak, make us controllable. So one of the tough things about waking people up is that the things that they love so dearly are the very things that is destroying, is destroying them. So uh, to come full circle with your question, uh, I don't have to give my opinion 
about why the breakdown of the family is bad. We just look at all the bad things in the world and it, we can point straight to the breakdown of the family. Yeah. And with the idea of if you, if you're the communist party and you want to destroy this thing called democracy, freedom, you want to run the whole world, then in order to destroy the society that you don't like, you have to start with a family. And to me, that's just kind of like, if you start destroying the cells of the body, that's a very easy way to destroy the body. It's kind of like you take, you know, nerve gas agents and, you know, pesticides you put on crops. None of them use brute force to kill the insect. They don't run the insect over with a car. They destroy the insect from the inside out cellularly. And I think the family is the cellular structure of society. And as you mentioned, when that starts to break down, and society starts to break down. You can't have a healthy body with unhealthy cells. Mm -hmm. And um, something else, I, I, I know you've been looking at this for a while, but I just started to uh, consider it as I'd watch your social media get sound bites, like pretend I know Elliot from your social media. <laughs> and you, you would talk about um, men's, places in society, women's places in society. At first glance, I'm like, fuck, is that disempowering to women? When I started looking deeper, I realized, no, 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 Elliot's being very empowering to women. Where my experience of the reality of it is a woman's unspeakable power in this world, which I think is even more powerful than a man's power is this magic of bringing a child into the world and raising the child. When I watched my wife give birth three weeks ago, I was astonished. I had never seen a bigger act of bravery, never seen anything more spiritual. I've never seen anything more powerful. Anything I've done pales in comparison. Yet, in the breakdown of our families, we've been sold a narrative that says, women, if you wanna have a baby, you're, you're just being subservient to the patriarchy. And in order to be powerful, you need to get rid of that. View family, babies, the most magical fucking thing you could ever do. View that as an obstacle to your real power, which is making money power, control. So I realized like, yeah, look, unless I'm mistaken, that's what Elliot's been talking about when he's talking about men's roles and women's roles where yes. I heard you say women have inherent value just because they are. Right. That has a lot to do with they, they can give birth to a child. That's magical. Men's value is in what they do. Um, at a basic level. I'm curious if I, my little riff there, uh, if that's on point with your actual point of view, because I put a lot of words in your mouth through my recall, or how that lands with you. Yeah, no, I would say that you're, you're spot on. You got me. You figured it out. That's exactly what I'm talking about. And it's crazy because it sounds like when someone speaks this way, that they're you know, I just got banned from TikTok, permanently banned from TikTok. Congratulations. What, what did you do, Elliot? I know that. I think Hate speech. Hate speech. Hate speech. <laughs> <laughs> I got permanently banned for hate speech. What? And it's because of saying the things that you just proposed. So, so when you were speaking out of love, yeah, they, they call it hate speech. It's beautiful. Yeah. I love that. And I think that's part of the, I mean, isn't that part of the demoralization where kind of like the, the, the uh, cultural Marxist thing is when someone's doing something that you don't want them to do, accuse them of doing the opposite. As someone supporting freedom, then you say, oh, you're, you're against America. If someone's speaking from love and a higher truth, you say, that is 
false, checked by the fact checkers, mm -hmm. and it's not loving, it's hateful. Right. Yeah, it's completely backwards. Uh, there's a great phrase that I, I've heard uh, Father Chad Ripperger, who's got some great YouTube videos, say. He calls it diabolical disorientation. He's got this great YouTube series on uh, how, because he's, he's an exorcist. This guy is such a badass. He's an exorcist. So he like, he deals with demons on the daily and he like studies their personalities and speaks to people who have demonic oppression. And he's like, and he documents it. Super smart guy. And, uh, <laughs> and anyway, so because he's so familiar with, with demons and the demonic underworld and how they hypnotize and oppress people, he was able to point out how he says communism, he calls it communism, but basically the political left, you know, mm -hmm. progressives. He, he, he does a whole series on how demons and Democrats operate from the same paradigm. He was like, they're basically the same. Mm. And one of the things he was talking about was like how like one of the things a demon will do is they'll accuse you. You know, they say Satan, Satan's the great accuser. He'll accuse you of the very things he's doing. And we see that all the time with the left. They accuse you of the very thing that they're doing. You know, Antifa is so funny. They're at, it's anti-fascist, but it's like, wait a second. That's the most fascist thing in the world. What are you talking about? The very thing that they're saying they're against is the very thing that they're doing. And it was the same with what you said before, you know, uh, how they'll, they'll, they'll point something out, which is con the complete opposite of what it actually is. And that is purely diabolical disorientation. Yeah, uh, strip away your livelihood, stay in your fucking house. Uh, by the way, we're protecting you. No, we're not abusing you, we're protecting you. Right, or the Patriot Act. Yeah. It's patriotic for us to now spy on you. <laughs> yeah. It's the opposite. Do you, do you think the, the people on the left have a consciousness of, hey, we're ushering in communism? Or do you think it's more of a, they're subconsciously doing that? Well, I think what we've experienced over the past maybe four years since Trump was, came into office was the rise of the radical left. So, yeah. you know, like the AOCs and the Il, Ilha Omars. Uh, these are radical leftists. Like they're straight up, they will, they're communists and they know they're communists and they've got that agenda. They're, they don't make any bones about it, you know. Um, as a last ditch effort, Satan always shows his cards, mm. you know, and, and plainly shows his cards. So I think there's a spectrum of those who are like straight up. And I think, you know, the, I hate to say it, uh, but more it, the younger generations are more susceptible to it. This rise of quote unquote democratic socialism, which is basically like uh, the teething ring to communist stake. And so we're just kind of like, we're getting in there, to, we're just getting a little taste of it. And uh, we're, we're basically, uh, it's, it's being ushered in through the COVID and the lockdowns. And now these, uh, uni it's gonna be universal basic income. Now with the, the, the checks that everybody's gonna be getting and man, uh, I don't, I think that there are people who are, to answer your question, there are people who in their hearts, they think they're doing the right thing. They think they're loving because they're on the left. They think that they're about unity. They think that they're about rainbows and unicorns. Um, and they have no idea that th this, this parade of pride and bubblegum and uh, beauty is actually like how you're trained for socialism and communism. Uh, 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 the whole, um, they call it part, they call it like identity politics. And so it's like, it's very easy to get tricked into it. Cause I was there, I was totally there. I was there for a long time. You know, I, there's a saying that if you're not a, if you're, if you're not a Democrat in your twenties or like a leftist or a progressive in your twenties and thirties or something like that in your twenties, then you have no heart. But if you're not a conservative in your 30s or something like that, then you have no brain. Yeah, I so heard I, that. That's crazy. You heard that? <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, that makes sense. But at some point, uh, my brain woke up and I had to, you know, the only logical thing to do 
is to is to move right yeah yeah same for me and and and, you know as i'm like dude with what the fucking left has become and what the right is like cool if if i have to pick a side it's definitely the right yet i'll also say i ain't cementing my feet in any group think side it's like just right now with what the left is i clearly see it as communism uh and the right standing for freedom it's like uh give me a gun and i'm standing for freedom and i'll also do my own thinking i'm not gonna do the like what, what's my group think of this okay that, that, that then that's what i think it's like you know, yeah you could easily fall into that you kind of see it on the right also I, you know sure. i don't follow it too much but like the whole q movement I don't know if you're familiar with it. Not too much. I've heard of it, but I'm not too familiar. They can very easily be led astray as well. I think extremes on either side will can fall off the cliff. And I think that's what we're seeing. Yeah, man. <laughs> Do you, I'm going to treat you like a psychic for a second. Do you, do you think we can save this? Or do you think we're so far into the radical left, the ushering in of socialism, communism, uh, Biden's probably going to take office. Is it salvageable? So the first thing we'd have to define is what are we salvaging, right? Like what are we actually salvaging? And there could be, I mean, we could, there's certain parts of it that maybe can be salvaged, but when we choose what we think is worth sal- sal- salvageable, um, we have to acknowledge that there, there are pieces that are gone. And America as we know it, or thought we knew it, or maybe it was 60 years ago, is gone. It is gone. Uh, the, way, the way things have been, like they call it the, the great reset or the new normal or you know, this agenda 2030, like it's coming, it's coming, whether you like it or not. Uh, and we're not going to keep, no matter how conservative you are, you're not going to keep it the way it was, right? Um, but then you got to ask yourself, what is worth salvaging and what can we personally salvage? Because I think what's going to happen is, of course, you know, either there will be a political geographical balkanization of America, and we're just going to chop up and secede and we're going to be very different things, which may or may not happen. But what really matters is the soul. Yeah. And so I'm like, I told you, I was reading this book, uh, live not by lies. I forget the name of the author, but it's about Christian dissidents during the, uh, Bolshevik revolution and, you know, the totalitarian of, of Eastern Europe. Um, and the book is written for dissidents. And he says, the first thing that we have to do is come back home, right? Because now we're all dazzled by the big stage. Is it going to be Trump? Is it going to be Biden? The new world order, like it's huge. Hmm. And he's like, that's going to do what it's going to do. And there's pretty much nothing that you can do about it. He says, but then you got to come back home. And... If you're a Christian, one of the things you live your life for is for the salvation of your soul. Like become the best you, become perfect, become cleansed of all attachment to this material Maya matrix of a mindfuck world, purify. But then it's, it, it literally has to spread out little by little. Um, I love that when you use that term, when you said that the, the family is like the cell, and I'm just throwing this out there real quick because it was in my mind when you said it. Um, but our relationship to God, the pattern, father, paternity, I love, I don't know if this is true or not, but I just find it fascinating that the word pattern, pater, uh, father kind of relate. It's like God is the pattern, the, the DNA, the blueprint. What's a pattern? A blueprint? The blueprint, the pattern, the DNA within that cell is God the father. God mm-hmm. the father is the blueprint, right? I also think that the word matter relating to mother is like we are the pattern in the matter, like we're living in the mother world, but the father is the blueprint. Anyway, so that has happened first. The DNA, the DNA, our DNA is atonement 
with the pattern of God the Father. But then, like you said, the cell, it starts working out, you know, into the organelles and whatnot. The nucleus, like first you got the DNA and then you got the nucleus. The nucleus is the family. We will need our families. If there's no families, we are gonna suffer. We've got to, and the way that's going to happen is we've got to go back to moral conservatism because we can't be sluts and have great families. We can't go around being addicted to promiscuity and uh, birth control and abortions and pornography and be sexual deviants and think that like, and then you're gonna have a nice family. It doesn't work that way. It, it never did and it, obviously it's not. More than 70% now of uh, families end up in divorce. And one of the reasons why, and there are many reasons why, uh, is that promiscuity, particularly in women, reduce their ability to pair bond. So the more sex a woman has with different men, the, the lower her ability to, to bond with one. It's like because she's got all these different souls in her. And so we, gotta give, we have to come back to moral conservatism and then relate that to our family. So it's, if we're going to preserve something, it has to be a moral code. It has to be, and that's basically what, every the remnant of that is what allows great civilizations to rise yeah. is moral code that we can all in the family at least because even if, even like i see it with my own children like we're all on different screens and so every once in a while i have to like check in with them on like the moral code that i'm as the pattern the patter the father trying to instill i'd be like wait a second just because you saw that on TikTok, don't mean it's true we got to come back to agreement on what's important in life within that family. And only then, and I don't even wanna go much further than that because that in itself will, is tough, is, will, it will totally reverse things. Um, and it's super, super important. But when we, and, and I think in and of itself will then uh, start to trickle itself out into our communities. So it's about making men strong again, father pattern, DNA, and then making that nucleus strong again. A good family, a mom and a dad. Make babies. This whole idea that the world is overpopulated and that we shouldn't be making more babies is so wrong on so many different levels. And it, it really is a lie. It's one of those lies that people have, have believed. Mostly white people believe this. And that's why you guys are getting outnumbered because Mexicans are still having babies. Black people are still having babies, except they're the ones that are getting all the abortions. Um, but it's like, it seems the, the most brainwashed people are white people and you know, they, they, they're not having babies. Get married, stop being a slut, have babies, atone with God the Father, teach moral, not relativism, but conservatism. We need boundaries, we're way too boundless. When we're so boundless, nobody knows what anybody stands for. You can't trust your neighbor because you don't know what moral code he's living by. And so how is that going to happen? Religion. It has always been that way. It will always be that way. We have to, ha we have to as much as the, the, the left and the world political correctness is about inclusion, we have to be more exclusive. There are certain people that I just, we should not be associating with it with them because they're going to pervert your, your morals. They're going to pervert your mindset. They're going to destroy the culture. So not more inclusion. And I'm going on a rant here, more exclusion, more saying no to certain people, to certain ideas, less openness. See this, see how crazy this sounds because like, well, it's talking about being closed minded. Yes. I'm saying be closed minded. It's the open mindedness that, and the, the quote unquote vulnerability that has allowed us to be so fuckable. So we actually need more boundaries. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think of like a garden and like, let's just call it the sacred garden of our family or the sacred garden of ourself. If you have an open fence to your garden 24 seven, because you're told that's the loving thing to do, <laughs> right? You're going to, your garden's going to get fucking trampled. But all, right. all kinds of people, squirrels come in, the deer come in. You can say, well, the deer are awesome. Yeah, they're awesome. Doesn't mean they believe, belong in your fucking garden. Doesn't mean you need to exterminate the deer. They're awesome. Love them. They have the boundary. Just kind of like the analogy of a cell. A cell with a weak 
cell membrane is fucked. A cell with the appropriate boundary is a strong cell. Yeah. And I think with what you said, it, <laughs> the looking at the world stage perspective, Biden, Trump, new world order, Bill Gates and his creepy agenda, Mark Zuckerberg, Jeff Bezos, that when I focus on that exclusively, I feel helpless and disempowered. I want to have a little perspective on what's going on there. And I want to do my best to see under the veil, you know, see the uh, Wizard of Oz behind the curtain, realize there's weakness there that's not strength. Mm -hmm. I also want to help people wake up to it, but I want to get lost there because I think, and I'm owning this for myself through the attempt to create empowerment. I've created personal disempowerment by exclusively focusing my time and bandwidth on the world stage because I realize I can't fucking change it. I'm one person. I can hopefully motivate people to change themselves, not be obedient to it, but still. But then when you land that, land it all with uh, bring it back to the family, yourself, connection, have morals. That reminds me of Gandhi's just timeless wisdom. Be the change you wish to see in the world. That's where the power's at. Don't go out and just try and change the world. Right. Maybe you have a little bandwidth devoted to that, but make sure you have your prime bandwidth devoted to you changing you, be the change you wish to see in the world. Then ironically, that seems to be the most potent way to change the world. Have the fence around your garden. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Whew. Man, you mentioned some of the people, I'm not sure if they were specific or types of people that you just want to exclude. I'm curious who you were, who you were referring to. Well, first of all, I think a time is coming when we're not going to be able to choose because the exclusion is just going to happen. So for example, this, uh, this vaccine, uh, it, and I'll, I'll do it like, you'll see how it like happened in chunks. There are those who will be, who will choose, who will say no, and then they'll be excluded, yeah. whether we like it or not, right? And then that group starts to like chunk itself down because then you have like libertarians, you know, so these are people that like, they just will say no to basically anything, right? You got anarch anarchist type people, libertarians. Uh, and then you have Christians who are like, no, because it has these uh, aborted fetal cells, apparently some of them have. Um, and so like the exclusion just starts happening. And I think that's what ultimately a, a part of what this whole movement is towards who's going to get along, go along to get along and who's going to be kicked out of society. So it's happening to us, whether we want to choose it or not. Now, when we get to choose, right, who doesn't come into my, doesn't come into my mental sphere. Uh, without being specific, I could be specific but I won't, but it's those who live by a different moral code. If your moral code and my moral code don't line up, it is better that we don't hang out with one another. It's better that our families don't intermingle. It's better that we don't marry each other. You know, uh, one of the worst things I've seen happen are like, a, a, a woman and a man with two different religions who both come from like religious backgrounds. You see like a Muslim and a Catholic mm -hmm. <laughs> and they fall in love. They fall in love. And then the next thing you know, they can't agree on how we raise our children. It's like they didn't have the conversation beforehand. 
and I speak to a lot of these guys who are like, I really want to raise my children to be, to be Christian or, or Catholic, uh, but my wife is against it, or she's, her family is against it, or into something else. So it would have been better if you would have stuck to your own kind, right? Birds f fly with those birds that have the same feather, right? And it really is about moral co moral code. I say is a is a part of religion, but religion have a big part to do it too. It's ideological. It's ideological. It's moral. It's religious. It's ideological because uh, you can have people of different races that have the same moral code. Here's another one, like, love America, right? Like, it's so strange that there are people in America who benefit from America, but hate America, right? It's Patriotism is a, is, a, is a supernatural virtue. Patriot, remember the word patriot also too, patter, pattern, the father, patriot, patriarch, patriotism. Mm -hmm. It's like the pattern. So if we're not in the same pattern, if you can't be a patriot, that means we don't have the same pattern and you got to get out of here. Yeah. Yeah. It's interesting how being a patriot has become very politically incorrect now. And as a wise man once said, when you're being politically correct, you might as well have a gun to your head. <laughs> well, brother, before we wrap up, um, you, I'm curious if you have any additional bullet points on what a person can focus on to be a stronger individual. Death. Focus on death. You're going to die. That's the whole thing. I think a part of our indulgent culture, our degenerate, decadent culture has done to trick us into having us believe that life is YOLO and that there's no afterlife. There's no reason to sanctify your soul. There's no reason to be the best you because this is heaven right here. So get all the goodies, have all the sex, do all the degenerate things, and then you're just going to die and it's going to be no big deal because you're just a bag of bones and teeth and water and hair. And no one's going to miss you. It doesn't matter. Ticking, the, the, clock, the clock has ticked out. Goodbye. Uh, I'm not convinced of that, and I'm not convinced that's a good idea. That is a bad idea to even think that way. You don't have to have strong faith to look at that and say, I don't think that's a great way to, it's not a good idea. That's not a very resourceful idea because then people live lives in very irreverent, degenerate ways. Uh, you're going to die. You know what's a really good idea to consider? You're going to be judged. Jesus is going to judge you. Jesus loves you, but if you're a degenerate, he doesn't want you. God wants perfection. And if you spent your life being anything less, then the perfect self that you were designed to be, Jesus will weep, you'll be sorry, but you ain't gone to heaven. Your soul will get exactly what it hankered for this entire time while you were here in this life, and it's gonna suck. You're gonna burn. I think the idea of heaven and hell is a great idea because fear, is a great motivator. I, you know, we talked about fear before, and now it seems like I'm, you know, maybe talking in circles, and maybe I am. But there are some healthy fears. And the fear of living a degenerate life and meeting your creator after this and burning for eternity is a good reason to do the right thing. Be the right kind of person. Become perfect. Become a saint. Yeah. Standing on the edge of a cliff that's hundred feet down into sheer rocks. I want to be afraid when I'm standing at the edge of that <laughs> cliff Yeah, to motivate me into a better way of living. And I also don't want fears that don't serve me. Uh, when I'm told to be afraid of shit that I'm not actually afraid of, that actually doesn't look super real to me. <laughs> you're going to say no to that fear. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Utilize rather than weaponize fear. Mm -hmm. Yeah, good yeah. fears. It's good. It's 
good to fear. Man, thank you, brother. I, I so I'm just gonna uh, toot your horn one more time. I so appreciate your devotion to your truth, letting yourself evolve, letting who you are metaphorically die so you can be reborn into a greater version of yourself and to not be intimidated by the caterpillars sitting around the table <laughs> saying you've changed mm -hmm. what's wrong with you Motherfucker. I, got wings. <laughs> I got wings so thank you I, man I, I look forward to being confused at the next version <laughs> of elliot <laughs> brother where's the best places for people to find you and connect with you online uh i don't know you can go to youtube sometimes i still upload videos every once in a while instagram sometimes uh if you follow me on instagram and you see an ad where i say message me the word king message me the word king and join my like-minded group of men who are growing stronger in this degenerate age yeah. yeah and then you'll get you'll get all of me then awesome and you're on uh instagram uh, at elliot hulse yep e-l-l-i-o-t-t-h-u-l-s-e that's me <laughs> i love the song well brother thank you for taking the time to drop in speak your mind speak your heart have space for mine i appreciate you for being the human that you are man thanks for having me jp this was fun dude i appreciate you too man keep on keeping on I will do my best on that.